The conifer pulled away from the pier a half hour ahead of schedule. It was a good sign. As they cruised through San Diego Harbor, JJ got a continuous washdown. Her handler stayed close by, familiar faces in unfamiliar surroundings. We're just passing Point Loma right now, and we're just beginning to feel the swell of the ocean. It's not too bad. They wanted to get JJ to an area where the Coast Guard had spotted a pod of three gray whales earlier this morning. Lower her down. And then he's going to say, release the whale. OK. But he's got to get permission from the bridge. Finally, at about 20 after 10, they slowly lowered JJ over the side and down to the tops of the waves. Attack, release the whale! Release the whale! With a splash and a cheer, JJ was gone. A moving sight for everyone lucky enough to see it. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity to see a sight that uh, people have been waiting for for a while. But when JJ went under, nobody could find her. Haven't seen her anywhere, still looking. From what I understand, she kind of headed north. She uh, stayed down for several minutes and then she was sighted uh, in the same general vicinity as the release. Go, JJ, go. This is just going to be something that, that you can show your children for posterity. This is something that's never been done before and, you know, we've gotten the opportunity to watch it. It's just incredible. She was released amid much fanfare on Tuesday morning, but even though JJ the Grey Whale had been equipped with high-tech trackers, now researchers must rely on other methods to find her. This is one of the two satellite tracking devices that have been attached to JJ. Both fell off, but both were recovered. Now, researchers had hoped to gain information for about 18 months. Obviously, they are disappointed. As a scientist, of course, I am discouraged. I was hoping that uh, some of the improvements that we had made in the toggles that we used would allow these devices to stay attached a bit longer to JJ than has been the experience with other whales. Yoakum says the toggles, which were around the transmitter, were put on JJ before the date of her release. We did place the toggles in advance so that we could watch them for a few days. And, you know, we were pretty pleased with what we saw. But then we didn't actually attach the transmitter until she was in her transport box on the way to, uh, on the, way to the vessel. Unfortunately, both transmitter boxes came off. Now, they think they were probably knocked off, one near Coronado, the other south of San Diego, because she's so active. One box was scratched and splintered. So where is she now? Our last uh, posi position location from her was uh, around uh, Imperial Beach. But they tell us they're not overly concerned that she hasn't been spotted since then. But they say the information they have already indicates she's doing pretty well. She's learning in small steps. She successfully navigated along the coast. We saw her looking a lot, using her eyes. And we wondered whether she was going to actively vocalize to help herself navigate. Nobody knows how gray whales do this. JJ will still be tracked visually. She has a thin red, white, and blue spaghetti streamer attached to her. They'll also rely on photo IDs because she's easily identified. She has very distinctive markings, as I mentioned, and has been photographed uh, probably daily for the past 14 months since she's been here. These photos are, are individual enough that they're, uh, people liken them to a fingerprint. 